Hello, everyone. Today we are going to do PAX3 Services in Unit 2, version 7, 5.1.9. PAX user investigate STP loop prevention. Objectives. In this lab, you will observe a spanning tree port states and watch the spanning tree convergence process. Describe the operation of a spanning tree protocol. Explain how spanning tree protocol prevents switching loops while allowing redundancy in switched networks. In this activity, you will use Packet Tracer to observe the operation of a spanning tree protocol in a simple switched network that has redundant paths. Instructions. Part one, observe a converged spanning tree instance. Step one, verify connectivity. Ping from PC1 to PC2 to verify connectivity between the hosts. Ping from PC1 to PC2. And the ping should be successful. Okay, let's go to ping from PC1. Command prompt. And ping PC2. Here's PC2's IP address. So ping PC2. 192.168.1.101. Success. Good. And step two, view spanning tree status on each switch. Use the show spanning tree VLAN one command to gather information about the spanning tree status of each switch. Complete the table here. This is a table. For the purposes of the activity, only consider information about the gigabit trunk ports, the fast Ethernet ports are access ports that have end devices connected and are not part of the inter-switch trunk-based spanning tree. Okay, here, there's something uh, uh, missing in this table. So we're gonna collect the information from these devices and put in this table. The switch, there are three switches. Switch one to three, switch one to three, and the ports. Okay, here we only need to consider the gigabit trunk ports. We know that the switch has totally 26 physical ports in which 24 fast ethernet ports and two gigabit ethernet ports. The 24 fast ethernet ports are access ports because they directly connected to the end devices. Uh, we ignore that. We only need to focus on the gigabit Ethernet trunk ports because the gigabit Ethernet ports are trunk ports. The trunk ports, they connected with another network devices like a switch connected to router or a switch connected to switch. So in this case is the switch to switch connection. Status, FWD is forwarding, BLK is blocking. So forwarding status or blocking status. Root bridge, what is root bridge? Bridge is switch. So root bridge is a root switch. The root bridge is the switch with the lowest priority number or the switch with the lowest mark address number. Okay, let's go to switch one. Okay, enable show spanning tree VLAN one. All right, so look at this um, fast Ethernet F01. We ignore this because uh, this is access port connected to the PC one. We only need to think about it. The G01 and G02, the both port status are FWD forwarding. So we copy this information and paste to here in this table. Right. How about the root bridge? It doesn't say this switch, this one is a root bridge. So we put um, no and no, all right? So, and look at here, look at the bridge ID priority number, 32,769 is a priority number and address. This address is MAC address. 
this switch use MAC address to transmit information. Remember this number, 32,769 priority number. Okay. And go to switch two. Enable show spanning tree VLAN one. All right. And here is the same, this faster Ethernet. F01, we ignore it. It's a it connect PC2. Here's a G01 and G02 trunk port. Um, both port status are FWD forwarding. So we copy paste this information to the table. And how about to the root bridge? So here it says this bridge is the root. That means the switch S2 is the root bridge. So we put yes and a yes. All right. And I look at this bridge ID priority number is the same as S1, 32,769. This is the MAC address of S2. All right. And uh, let's go to S3. Enable show. Um, spanning tree. VLAN one. All right. So there are two ports. Okay. G01 is forwarding. G01 is forwarding, and G02 is BLK. BLK is blocking. G02 is blocking. Here's the orange lights, the blocking. So this port, G02, is blocking port. Okay, let's copy paste to the table. And how about to the root bridge? It doesn't say this switch S3 is a root bridge. So it put no and no, all right, okay. And a look at the bridge ID priority number. It's the same as the S1 and S2. It is uh, 32,769, 32, all right. So let's uh, talk about a little bit more about the root bridge selection. Is when we are doing, when we are using STP spanning tree protocol to build a loop free switched network, the first step we need to select a root bridge from these three switches. And as I said, root bridge is the switch with the lowest priority number or the switch with the lowest MAC address number. So let's look at it here. Yeah, the selection, root bridge selection is based on two factors or the three factors, which is the bridge ID priority number, right? So here, I look at this priority number is 32,768. This is default priority number and plus one. This one is the VLAN ID number VLAN one. It is also called a system ID extended or extended system ID. It refers to the VLAN ID number. So we add these two numbers together, get to the bridge ID priority number. The first step, the first step is um, to select the switch with the lowest priority number as the root bridge. But in this case, all these three switches have the same priority number, 32,769. So in this case, in this situation, we're going to use the MAC address as the deciding factor to break the tie and to select the switch with the lowest MAC address number as the root bridge. So these are two factors in the root bridge selection. So here, S2 is the root bridge. So that means 
the S2's MAC address should be the lowest MAC address compared to other two switches, S1 and S3. All right, so if you guys are interested to compare these three switches MAC address, you can do that. Next, we need to answer some questions. Packages uses a different link light on one of the connections between the switches. All right. So in this topology, this light, the link lights are all green. The green little triangle are the link lights. But only this one, G02 on S3 is orange light, orange dot or amber dot. The question is, what do you think this link light means? Okay, the answer is, it means that the port G02 on S3 is in blocking state. It is not forwarding data. Okay, the next question is, what path will frames take from PC1 to PC2? The path the frames take is PC1, S1, S2, and PC2. That is the path the frames take. All right, so this is the answer. The next question is, why do the frames not travel through S3? Travel to S3, not travel. Okay, why? That's because That's because of the port G02 is in the blocking state to stop loops. So no frames are sent and received on the port G02. Next question, why has spanning tree placed a port in blocking states? That's because if if all the ports could forward the frames, a switching loop will be formed in the network. Switching loops can degrade network performance and even cause a network to fail. So we finished part one. The part two, observe a spanning tree convergence. Step one, remove the connection between S1 and S2. Remove connection between S1 and S2. Remove this one, this link. All right, so open CLI, S3, select delete tool. Here are the delete tool. And uh, watch the orange light turn green, orange light turn green, and observe the G02 port status change. OK, let's go to S3, Turn open the CLI. OK. So I'm going to use this delete tool, no, delete tool to remove this link. So, and uh, in the meantime, we are going to watch this light, the orange light will turn green. And uh, also we need to watch this um, G02 port status will change from blocking to forward. And uh, there's a number Forward delay is 15 seconds. Forward delay is the time spending in listening and learning. So I'm going to count 15 seconds between the change port status. All right, so two things, light turn green and port status change. We need to watch. Okay, I click it, remove it, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I count a little bit fast because uh, in the meantime I need to talk. So here, still blocking. Here's an orange, still orange. All right, so now change from blocking to lessening, LSN lessening. So another 15 seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, 
So learning from listening to learning here is still orange. So we wait another 15 seconds. Let's check. All right, still learning. Okay, now change turn green. So here should be forwarding. All right, so this light, the link light turn green, that means the port status change to forwarding. And uh, this link between S1 and S3 is activated. So this link take over the work of the previous link between S1 and S2. Okay, let's answer the question. Okay, what do you see happen to the status of the G02 port during this process? The process that we see the change, the status change from black blocking BLK to lessening, and from lessening change to learning, and from learning change to final forwarding. Okay, that is what we see during this process. So status change from blocking, lessening, learning, and forwarding. Um, next, uh, verify connectivity by ping from PC1 to PC2 should be successful. Okay, let's pin again. I use up arrow. Success, still success. That's because even though we remove the link between one and two, but the path changed from PC1, S1, S3, S2, and PC2. So this link took over the work. The last question of any ports showing an orange link light that indicates that the port is in the spanning tree states other than forwarding, why or why not? The answer is no. That's no, no orange link lights are showing here because there are no redundant paths in the network. Okay, we finished this package, sir. Investigate STP loop prevention. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please thumbs up, leave comments, subscribe my channel and share with your friends. See you next time.